Hi everyone, it's time for Essential Matanzas Part 2. These are my suggestions to you when you're visiting the city and you really want to just wander around places that will give you a sense of the vibe of the city and also a sense of the beauty of the physical aspects of Matanzas. So let's do the rundown. Okay, first up on the list, Escalinada de Jesus Maria. What this is, is a large staircase. I think there are around 120, 121 stairs. There are 10 different landings, and it's very close to downtown. It's only about five minutes up Calle Santa Teresa. You just go straight down that street towards the river, and you hang a left, and you will see the stairs there. The stairs were constructed between 1948 and 1949, and they connect two neighborhoods, the neighborhood of La Marina, and then the neighborhood of Alturas de Simpson, which is, uh, in English, it's Simpson Heights. Alturas de Simpson is also the name of the very first danzón composition created in Matanzas by Miguel Failde back in the latter part of the 19th century, I think around 1872. Before those stairs were constructed, it was just a dirt path leading up the hill with houses lined up on either side. So I can't imagine having to go to school, go to work, go to the store or go to the market um, every single day and, and do that trek. But that's how it is in Matanzas because the city is built on the side of a hill, essentially. When you get to the top stair and you turn around and you look towards the bay, you have one of the most amazing views of the city. You can see the Bay of Matanzas in the distance. You can see the Rio Yumuri. You can see the steeples of Iglesia San Pedro. So it is just a, a spectacular vista. Since you're there, you're actually very close to number two on the list, which is Cueva del Indio. This is a limestone cliff that runs along the Rio Yumuri. There is a neighborhood at the base of it. You may recognize the name Cueva del Indio because across Cuba, there are a number of sites by the same name, but this is not one that you're gonna find on a list on TripAdvisor things to do in Matanzas because they're not groomed, they're not maintained, so they're not suitable for exploration by tourists. So you might be wondering, if I can't visit the caves, why would you suggest that I go there, Kelly? You know why? Because it is a very peaceful, serene area. You can walk along there, see the cliffs, you can see the Rio Yumuri, and if you walk uh, to where the cliff is the highest, you will see the landscape open up, and what that is is called El Abra de Yumuri. That is the opening into El Valle de Yumuri, the actual Yumuri Valley. So it's just really peaceful and quiet and more natural than downtown, of course. So it's it's some place that I think everybody should see. Number three on the list is Parque Rene Fraga Moreno. The locals usually just call it Parque Fraga or Parque Rene Fraga, and sometimes I just distill it down to Fraga Park. But it is a large park right at the top of the city. If you take Calle Contreras and or Calle Milanese, both of them lead west all the way up the hill and they wrap around the park at the top. It has one of the most spectacular views of the city also. This park is interesting. It was constructed around 1929. It was built on three different levels, three different terraces. It is used for all kinds of things, sporting events. They have a ball diamond there. They have festivals there. So, and they have community events there. So it's been used a lot. It's like a multi-use space. When it was first built, it was called Machado Park, but the name was changed a number of times over the years, and then in 1959 it was changed to René Fraga Moreno. He was an active member of the July 26th movement, and in 1959 they changed the name of the park in honor of him, so now it is Parque René Fraga Moreno. I did want to suggest that you visit this park because it does offer such amazing views of the city and also a view of local life because people will be playing sports there and, and that kind of thing. So Parque René Fraga Moreno. Number four on the list, Calle Medio. 
If I could only suggest one place in the city to go people watching, this would be it. And that's because it's one of the main streets that leads from downtown. It starts in Plaza de la Vigia, the historic founding square, and runs west uh, quite a ways. The first few blocks are closed to motorized traffic. They're only for pedestrians, which is great because in Cuba, there is no such thing as a pedestrian having the right of way. If there's a car, just get out of the way. This street is full of everyday life. There are banks, cafes, cantinas, there are restaurants, there are some bars, there are little tiendas. So uh, it's just a, a great place to kind of plunk yourself or to wander up and down and um, you know be there with the locals as they go about their daily business. So wander down Cae Medio, that is number four on the list. Number five on the list, the last thing I wanted to mention is Cae Narvaez. This really deserves its own video altogether because it has played such a huge role in the development of the city and it has some really cool history behind it that I want to tell you about. But for the purposes of this video, I wanted to mention it because it is a great place to just go and wander. Very close to downtown, there are some bars and some cafes and some artist studios along there. You're along the, um, the San Juan River and uh, Puente Tiri is there. And it's just uh, a nice place to go to spend an evening or an afternoon. Great place to watch the sunset. There are a lot of sculptures and a lot of artwork along the river there. In fact, every single bar and cafe restaurant along there will be displaying artwork from local artists. And then you also have uh, Adrian Socorro Suarez, his studio is there as well as Lolo's Gallery is there. And when I first started going to the city back in 2014, this was nothing but a dirt path. It was not a place that you really wanted to go down and wander around. Lolo's Gallery was there at that time. That was pretty much the only reason to go down there. But again, back when they were refurbishing the city, they refurbished that whole area and it really is quite lovely now. If you've been to any of the places on this list, I'd love to hear what you think about them. Please put it in the comments below. And if you haven't, I hope that you get a chance to experience at least some of the things that I've suggested in Essential Matanzas Part 1 and Part 2. If you haven't already subscribed, please do so and hit the bell so that you know when the next video is up. That's it for now. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.